During this video we're going to take a look at a node which is under the function section and is called the change node. If you're doing anything in, in a programming environment, um, we have a memory area uh, where your process data will, will reside. Now in PLC world that's called the peripheral memory area. If you want to use those process values throughout your program, and this is true really for any programming language, you need to push those into a, a memory location. And that's the primary function of the change node, but it does have some, some other nice features. So let's have a look at the change node. I've got these projects here which we're going to run through, but if we have a look at the change node, double click this, we can see here the rules and we can add multiple rules yeah? and they don't all have to be the same they can be they can be different but um, if we have a look at these we can set so we're setting the the input to 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 another value okay now that's really powerful for moving things into global or flow memory area then we have change, which we're going to have a look at in a minute. Then we've got delete, and then we've got move. So we've already got an existing memory location, and we want to move a new value into there. So it's a one-time move. Okay, so let's have a look at these. I'll just delete that and um, deploy my project. We're going to have a look at the, the change node to start off with. So if we have a look at the rule that I've set, I've set it to change. We're looking at the message payload. And then we're going to search for a number with a value of 20. And when I get that, I'm going to replace that value with a string, and it's going to be called an alarm. So I've got a debug on the output. And if we have a look at our inject nodes, the message payload is either going to be 20, 100, or 50. So I'm going to clear my debug. So I've gone over here and clicked on debug. We'll inject 50 and we can see here the payload coming out is 50 and then 100. The payload is still 100 because we haven't um, got to that, that rule that we've set yet. And if we inject 20, now we have a string on the output called alarm. So it's a very, very basic way of making an alarm. You could use this to, to bucket data. The, you know, so you can start putting some JSON expressions in there if you want to. So, so you can look at values between X and X equals this value. And then you can start counting how many times you, you get an alarm or you get a certain string. So that's quite powerful. I personally use it to move data from message payload into memory. So I can use it throughout the rest of my, my program. But let's have a look at this first example. I'm moving a new value to um, a global memory location so that we're injecting a message payload of 50 randomized and a topic of move data one. So if I now have a look at my debug inject, I can see here um, I have a topic of move data and then I have this value. Now if I keep doing that you'll see that I'm getting the randomized data. So this allows the data to go all the way through because we're, we're, we're saving it, we're not moving it. Now you'll see the difference between the, the move and the save in a, in a minute. So let's have a look at our context data now because if we have a look at our rule we are moving the message payload into a global memory area called test. Now I could have quite easily set that to flow, um, but um, I want to use this throughout all of my flows, so I've got it set to global. So let's have a look at my memory location. If I go to my global memory area, you have to refresh it. You can see here, here's, here's my process value, and if I do an inject and a refresh, it's going to be a different value around 50 all the time. So that's one way of doing it. We've got our message payload coming in and we're moving it to you know, a data location. But you can build the rules up if you're doing you know, some sort of simulation. So I, I've done a, a few sets here. So I have a randomized value. So rather than the randomized value being in my inject node, my inject node is blank. I'll show you that in a second. I'm also setting a global... Um, memory location called test time. So I've got the timestamp there 
and then I've got um, a global memory area called test tag and yes I'm vain I like it when my computer says I'm sexy so let's have a look at the inject node the inject node is just pushing a topic so let's um, go to our debug first of all I can see here I've got the message topic but I've got no message payload and the reason for that I haven't defined the message payload anywhere in my rules so if I go back to here there's no message payload at all I'm using the Java expression pushing that into to test memory I'm, I'm generating a time by a built-in function on node red I'm pushing that into time and then I'm just generating a, a, a tag which is a string and I'm pushing that into global memory area. So there's no message payload on there at all. So that's why I'm not seeing anything. But the data is still being pushed into global memory area. If I go back to my context uh, storage location, click on refresh, you can see there, there's my process value. That's the time it came in and that's the, the tag. Now we'll have a look at the delete. And it's easy to understand. Again, I'm not inject anything other than a topic. So if I have a look at my rules I've got this one here where I'm going to delete the global memory area called test now you can do that from here look you've got this little delete option um, but this um, is a way of putting it into your code so if I have a look at my debug and just inject this again there's no message payload coming through I can see here I, I do have my um, topic but the message payload is undefined. If I go back to my context storage, I should have deleted this top one now. So now I only have these two. So what I'm going to do is I'll inject all of those back in and do a refresh and then we'll have a look at the last one. As I said, you can build, build up multiple rules. So here I've got the same inject node and I'm just going to delete all three memory locations. So let's, let's do that. Inject and have a look I have nothing now in my memory locations the last one is the the move I'm telling it to move the message payload into a global memory area called test tag now I'm not saying set so the interesting thing here will be will this throw up an error because that global will it throw up an error because the global memory area doesn't exist or will it create it I'll be totally honest I don't know I've never done this before so let's clear the debug and let's inject to see what happens okay undefined let's have a look at our you can see here I'm not getting my, my, my message payload coming through if I go to my context data and do a refresh so it has had added the tag for me as well so it sets it so let's have a look at um, the, the full action of the, the flow so if I stop this go back to my debug I've, I've, I, this is the message coming directly out of my inject okay so you can see here I have a payload of goodbye sexy and a new tag but if I put this one on clear inject my, my payload isn't coming through so that's different to the set because the set is set in the memory location and pushing the data but also pushing the the payload through so if you don't want the payload to come through as well the move would be a, a, a good option and as we've just tested live it actually sets up the memory location for you as well if it doesn't exist there we have it the change node so we've looked at the the, the four options set change delete and move I hope that was useful but for now thanks for listening and I hope to see you again soon